if you have ever visited Scotland, you have likely been to Edinburgh. The picturesque city of cobbled streets and medieval buildings was built upon seven hills in an allusion to Rome. In modern pop culture, it is hard to ignore works that were inspired by this incredible location, including J.K. Rowland's groundbreaking fantasy series Harry Potter, Irvin Welsh's Trainspotting, Ian Rankin's Inspector Rebus, and the works of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, to name but a few. Edinburgh, however, is not only a city of beauty and artistic inspiration, but also a city of underground vaults, unspeakable atrocities and nightmarish creatures. With a history filled with grave robbery, murder, cannibalism and ghostly apparitions, Edinburgh truly is a city of two halves. The city is deemed by many to be one of the most haunted in the world and is full of gruesome tales too numerous for us to cover in a single episode. Today we will simply focus on one location, a location in the heart of Aldrike, a location that can still be visited and explored by the public today. Today we will discuss the horrible history and the haunted present of Greyfriars Kirkyard and the Covenanters prison. Upon initial inspection, Greyfriars Kirkyard appears much like any other. A green graveyard divided by gravel paths surrounded by what in this day and age could be deemed on outward appearances alone as a rather unremarkable church. If you were to walk through the Kirkyard and look upon the many headstones, you may see some familiar names, including William McGonagall and even Tom Riddle. We also could not discuss this location without taking a moment to acknowledge Scotland's most famous dog, Greyfriars Bobby. A headstone can even be found in the yard for the Sky Terrier and Folk Hero. The story would have it that after the death of his master, John Grey, the dog would visit his grave daily and spend his day sitting atop the stone. This happened every day for 14 years. This story has been told time and time again and immortalised in books, television and film, with the dog being commemorated in a statue only a few minutes walk from the Kirkyard. The accuracy of the legend, however, has been challenged, with it likely that the dog did not sit on his master's grave, but simply visited the Kirkyard in the hopes of being fed by members of the public and sat upon a stone as it was more comfortable than the wet Edinburgh ground. Despite being the location of this heartwarming tale, these grounds have a much larger and darker story to tell, one that is not only pivotal in the history of Edinburgh, but to the entirety of Scotland. Opening its doors for the first time in 1620, this kirk can boast the honour of being the first church in Scotland to be built post-Scottish Reformation. Scotland, like the majority of Europe, had for centuries been a very devout and Catholic country. However, the Reformation Rebellion of 1559 to 1560 swept across the nation and left Protestantism as the country's leading religious denomination. Politically, the country found itself ready for a shift with the death of King James V. Mary of Guise found herself as Queen Regent while her daughter, Mary Stuart, was shipped to France until she was deemed old enough to rule. This left Scotland without a strong Catholic influence on the throne, and while Mary of Guise was a capable ruler, the Scottish nobility began to grow mistrustful of her. When Mary failed to address the issue of religious reform, it quickly led to violence in 1559, with the Protestants ransacking Fife and reforming St Andrews in less than a month. They had also taken Edinburgh. By August 1560, the reformation of Parliament had occurred, which officially outlawed the practice of Catholicism and declared that the Pope had no spiritual authority over Scotland. This would bring in what seemed to be religious peace in the city, but this peace would not last. For our purposes, however, the real story of Greyfriars Kirkyard takes place at the rear of the site. 
If you're brave enough to venture along the haunted back wall, you would find yourself at a large metal gate put in place to prevent the public from venturing off into one of the most haunted areas, not only in the city, but in the entire country. The Covenanters Prison The Covenanters were a group of Presbyterians who wanted the right to continue to practice their religion without interference and who opposed the monarch inserting themselves into religious matters. King Charles I, however, believed that he had the divine right to not only rule the country, but to be spiritual head of the church. The Covenanters believed this was a right reserved for Jesus Christ alone. This resulted in the group signing the National Covenant in Greyfriars Kirk in 1638. Charles II took the throne in 1660, and the repression and persecution of the Covenanters became more severe. This culminated in the Battle of Bothwell Bridge in 1679, where the Covenanters marched against an army of government troops and met them in battle at the bridge over the River Clyde between Hamilton and Bothwell in Lanarkshire. The Covenanters were larger in number, but were undisciplined and lacked both experience and strong military leadership. The battle lasted less than an hour. Almost 1,000 Covenanters died, more than 1,000 were taken prisoner, and the remainder of the troops fled. The prisoners were taken to Edinburgh and imprisoned in a field that would become known as the Covenanters Prison. My granny's gutcher bare a sword at Bothwell Brig that do full day, and ne'er had left the bloody field, but for this guide. A gallant grey. She swam with him across the Clyde and bared to him on his door stain. Long after that he hid and lay till he was hunted out in tain. For Christ his crown at covenant he lay doing his life in Embrotoon and free the scaffold rose to wear the victory's prom and martyr's crown. No God be praised, sick times of gain. Let Scots be Scots, they'll ne'er return. Nor king nor priest again hae power. Get men and true to hang and burn. Janet Hamilton, Bothwell Brig, approximately 1854. The prisoners were held in the Covenanters' prison, exposed to the elements behind the walls for over four months. Few prisoners managed to make plea bargains and after months of torture and maltreatment secured their release by signing a bond of loyalty to the Crown. Most were not so lucky. Many died from exposure. Others starved. Sir George Mackenzie, lawyer and legal advocate to the Crown, was said to impose a whole range of unspeakable torture on the Covenanters, earning himself the name Bloody Mackenzie. Records vary but some say hundreds died by Bloody Mackenzie's very hand. Others say the deaths were merely due to the man's actions, or on his orders. Those who were left alive at the end of the four months were taken to elite docks and forced to board a ship to the Americas. The ship did not make the journey, being wrecked around the Orkney Islands. In total, less than 50 men survived. It may be no surprise then that this prison is so haunted, but what may shock you is to discover the worst haunting is performed by none other than the spirit of bloody George Mackenzie himself, today known as the Mackenzie Poltergeist. This male violent entity focuses most of its energy on one tomb, known as the Black Mausoleum, and has been deemed as one of the most convincing supernatural cases of all time. Before the mausoleum of George Mackenzie was interrupted in 1998 by a homeless man seeking shelter, these supernatural events did not occur. But since then, occurrences rose, forcing Edinburgh Council to lock off the entrance to the Covenanters' prison. The frequency and severity of these occurrences set this case apart from others that may be similar. Since the first sighting in 1999, there have been a total of 350 documented attacks, with over 140 attacks causing the victim to collapse. There have been countless reports of cold spots, hot spots, 
dead animal carcasses around the tomb. Bruises and burns of penal victims that show up under layers of clothing. People have spoke of hair pulling, of being hit, of strange smells and noises, even of knocking coming from within the ground. Some rare cases, people have even claimed that an enemy has followed them home to continue to torment them long after they have left the site. And some have even said that they were possessed by the spirit. Electronics also appear to act strangely within the prison, quickly draining of battery and photos being out of focus. The area has been exercised on more than one occasion, but the activity remains. Some have said that if the Mackenzie poltergeist is not a genuine occurrence, then they do not believe there is such a thing. Despite being closed off, you can enter the Covenanters prison and even the Black Mausoleum today. Tours around the Kirkyard and prison occur every night, and for a reasonable price, you can have the opportunity to seek out the Mackenzie Poltergeist and the spirits of the many men who died within the walls of the prison. But be warned, some hauntings are best left alone, for there truly is something eerie in the air around the Covenanters' prison, and you don't want to take an angry spirit home with you. This has been Finding Folklore. Like, Share, subscribe, and let me know if you have ever experienced ghostly activity. Until next time, may the devil walk behind you. Bye for now.